The first thing I'm going to have you guys do is actually update Windows to the latest version. The reason we're doing this now is so that it doesn't revert any changes that we make later. So go into the bottom left and type in Windows Update. Go into your Windows Update settings and install the latest updates. If it's already up to date, then great job. Make sure to restart Windows if it doesn't automatically. The second thing that we absolutely have to do before we continue any further is update our graphics card drivers to the latest update. I'm on AMD Radeon software, so you're going to right click the desktop, you're going to click AMD Radeon software, you're going to go to home, and then you're going to see on the right side there's going to be the little download button, and you're just going to download it there. For all of you NVIDIA users, I am going to have a link in the description where you can go to the website to get the NVIDIA drivers, but I can only show what I have, so we're doing AMD Radeon here. Once it's done downloading, simply hit install. When you get this pop-up, you're gonna have a couple options. If you click the additional options tab, there's a factory reset option, which will take away every previous install of the drivers you have and replace it with the new one you're downloading right now. For the purposes of this video, I'm gonna leave that off and Nvidia does have the same option just in the Nvidia update system rather than AMD. If your screen flickers, that's normal, don't worry. Make sure to restart your computer. I'm not gonna do it for the video because we have more stuff to cover, but make sure you restart yours. If you guys are following along okay so far, hit the like button. And the next thing we're actually gonna do is we're gonna create a Windows restore point. Any point during the video, your PC messes up, something happens and you don't like it or it just doesn't work for you, you can come back and restore to this point. So go into the taskbar, search up Windows restore point, click on it, this window is gonna pop up and click create. After you click create, give it a name. I'm just gonna put like YouTube tutorial for mine and then just click done. It'll load and then you're just good to go. This is the point in the video where we're ready to move to the game specific things that are really gonna make the big difference. We're gonna be getting a few links from the description. So we're gonna get rid of the bloatware that comes pre-installed. So if you actually go into the description, you're gonna find these two links. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into the search bar and you're going to search Windows PowerShell. Open that up as administrator, copy the command, the first one, and paste it into Windows PowerShell and press enter. I haven't actually seen anybody include bloatware removal inside of one of these videos, so I think this is really going to help a lot of you out. So basically what we're doing is removing everything that comes with Windows that you don't need. It's going to do everything automatically. You can see what it's doing. I know it looks scary, but trust me, it's not. There are a couple options on here that you do not want to get rid of if you use them. As an example, there is OneDrive. If you do use OneDrive, do not get rid of it. Do not click that button. You can install it afterwards. If you use Cortana, don't disable it. If you use Edge PDF, don't disable it. There is a dark mode theme there, so it's pretty cool. And just basically don't click anything you don't actually want to get rid of. Once that's completed, you know the drill. Load up the second command and basically do the exact same thing, but on this one instead. In the Windows Update section that you see in the bottom left there, that is going to stop Windows from updating. So you can click default settings to revert to default, but what I recommend you do is do security updates only. What that's going to do is it's going to prolong the period of time that Windows is going to try and automatically update so that there's no actual interruptions or background processes being used by Windows for updating. The security on the right hand side, that's a tricky one. You want to click low for the best performance, but you are going to be more vulnerable because it makes some tweaks to Windows firewall and other things that's listed right there. If you don't want that, click high, it's going to set it back to normal, but you are going to lose a bit of performance for that. So the next thing we're going to be doing is going into the Call of Duty Warzone application inside of the Battle.net launcher, clicking on the cog wheel and going to game settings. Click Call of Duty Warzone from there, hit additional command line arguments to bring up this text box and type in dash D3D11. This is going to force your game to run in full screen exclusive mode, giving you the reduced input lag that we all want. The next thing you need to do is hit modify game install, and then you're going to be unchecking every part of the game that you don't use to save space on your system. Hit continue, then exit out. Next, we're going to go to file explorer, and we're going to go to the drive you have Warzone installed, go to battle.net, games, modern warfare, and then go to modernwarfare.exe application and right click it. Then just click properties, go to the compatibility tab, make sure you check disable full screen optimizations, then click high DPI settings and click override high DPI scaling. Press apply, okay, and then apply. Now we're gonna try making your guys' aim just a little bit better by disabling mouse acceleration. We're gonna do this by going to the search bar and typing mouse settings. 
Once this pulls up, click the additional mouse option setting and then go to pointer options. Once you're in pointer options, you're going to slide the first slider all the way to the left and go to the right five times using the arrows on your keyboard. Make sure you uncheck enhanced pointer precision so that you have no mouse acceleration inside of your game. I want to thank those of you who are still here. We are almost to the extremely effective tips that I'm going to be giving you today, but there is still a few things that we have to go through first, so just stick with me. We're going to be going into the graphic settings by going to the bottom left and typing graphic settings. And you are going to see here, if your PC is extremely new, you will have an option to enable hardware accelerated scheduling. If you have that, make sure you enable it. But regardless of that, if you do or do not, that's totally fine. Just below that there is going to be graphics performance options you're going to click browse and then you're going to locate your modern warfare.exe application like we did in a previous step by going to battle.net games modern warfare and then scrolling down until you find the modern warfare.exe application and then you're going to click it and click add once that's done click options high performance and save this is going to allow windows to use as much resources towards the game while it's running as it possibly can and it's going to help stabilize those fps drops and stutters that you might be having for everybody that actually uses discord in the background while you're playing your games go into the settings through the cog wheel and on the left hand side you're going to see appearance and then scroll down till you find hardware acceleration if you're on a medium to high-end pc turn this off because it might actually be causing some stutters and on a low to potato pc you're going to actually going to want to turn this on because it could help stabilize out some fps and give you a smoother experience let's go ahead and optimize your power options inside of windows so search up power and sleep settings and then on the right hand side there's going to be additional options once instead of here you're going to show additional plans you're going to have amd ryzen high performance or you're going to have ultimate performance or performance mode this is all going to depend on whether you're on amd or intel if you're on amd choose the amd ryzen high performance mode if you're on intel choose the high performance or ultimate performance mode we're making really good progress so let's keep pushing forward go into the description and find the intelligent list standby cleaner download link it's going to bring you to this web page and you're just going to scroll down and click the download button once you've got that downloaded you are going to need winrar or some type of zip file opener in order to do this so bring it to your desktop and extract it inside here you're going to find the first application there the intelligent list standby cleaner you're going to right click it create shortcut and drag the shortcut to your desktop from there, you can start the program. This program is going to free up unnecessarily used RAM on your system, and it's going to reduce input lag with the added timer resolution function inside of this program. The first number on the left hand side that you can edit, you want to leave as default 1024, but the number underneath that you want to be half of your system memory. You can find that by looking in the top left section and there's going to be a number there. That's your total system memory. So take that number, divide it by two, then take the number that you outputted in the calculator and put that number inside of the second space. No decimals are needed, no commas, it needs to be just four numbers. Put the polling rate to a thousand if you had a low end gaming PC and put a 500 if you have a high end gaming PC. Inside of the wanted timer resolution, put 0.50 click the checkbox to enable the custom timer resolution and then click start and purge standby list. Once it's done, minimize the application, don't close it, and that's going to take care of your memory pool in the background. This is the part of the video that you really want to listen up because this next tip has been proven to have the most effect while you're playing Warzone. This could be the difference from unplayable gameplay to having a smooth experience with higher FPS. What we're going to be doing to fix this issue is we're going to go into the Windows button, we're going to go into Documents, go to Call of Duty Modern Warfare, players and then you're going to want to open up the advanced underscore options file and in here i'm going to blow it up for you there's going to be the render worker count this number is extremely important what this does is it tells your pc how many cores it's allowed to use in your processor the number that we want to put here is going to be the amount of physical cores this can be found by clicking on your taskbar going to task manager clicking on more details go to performance and then click on your cpu there's there's going to be an option there for cores and you want to take that number and put it inside of the render work account option inside of the advanced game file the second thing inside of this file that we're going to want to change is our video memory scale we're going to want to put this from 0.85 to 0.75 let's take a look at optimizing our actual graphics card settings this is going to be different for amd and nvidia graphics cards so on screen i'm going to have pictures that you guys can follow and input settings on amd 
and Nvidia. Just make sure you copy all of the settings that you see on screen exactly how they are and you should be okay. We're now down to the final tips that I have for you in this video, the final optimizations. So let's go ahead and start the game. That's the first step of this one. Once you start the game, you're actually gonna wanna tab out of the game and go back into task manager like we did before. You can do this by hitting control, shift, escape. Once you're here, you're gonna wanna click on Call of Duty Modern Warfare. You're gonna wanna right click and press go to more details. After you've done that, you're gonna right click on the highlighted icon and you're gonna go to set priority. Set this to high and right below set priority, there's gonna be set affinity. You're gonna right click this one, uncheck CPU zero, but check every other box. Go ahead and tab back into the game so we can go over the in-game graphical settings. You're gonna want display mode set to full screen so you can have the smallest amount of input delay as you possibly can. Set your monitor to the one you use, your display adapter to your graphics card, refresh rate to the highest possible. Render resolution you need to set to 100. If you're still not happy with FPS and performance, slowly decrease it. I recommend 90 to 100. If you're really having trouble, bring it even lower than that, possibly to 70, even 66 at the lowest. Display resolution should be the resolution of your monitor. Mine is 1920 by 1080. Aspect ratio 16 by 9. Sync every frame, V-Sync should be disabled. Custom frame rate should be set to unlimited for the best input delay possible in FPS. Restart shader installation, you do want to click this and have it restart so that you can have a fresh, clean install of the shaders. That should fix any stuttering issues you might have. Display gamma should be set to 2.2. Streaming quality, so that's not gonna matter because we're disabling it anyway. Texture resolution set to normal. Anisotropic filtering set to low. Particle quality at low. Bullet impacts and sprays disabled. Tessellation set to disabled. On-demand texture streaming also set to disabled. Shadow map resolution set to low. Cache spot shadows and cache sun shadows set to enabled. Particle lighting also set to low. DirectX ray tracing set to disabled. Ambient occlusion set to disabled. Screen space reflection set to disable. Anti-aliasing off. If you wanted to, you could set this to M SMAA 1X if you want to smooth out the look a little bit, but I recommend setting it to off. Depth of field set to disabled. Filmic strength set to zero. World motion blur and weapon motion blur both set to disabled. You want zero film grain. Dynamic resolution off and dynamic resolution frame rate target set to off. Make sure to apply these settings and you're good to go. These are balanced in-game settings that hold a little bit of visual fidelity still while getting you the best FPS. If you want the most FPS possible, if you have a potato, go back to the beginning and set the texture quality and model quality down to the lowest it'll go. All of these fixes are definitely going to help you get more FPS and reduce input latency in Call of Duty Warzone. If you want to revert at any time, just remember you created that restore point. I'll have a couple other of my tutorial videos on screen now. I recommend you go watch them to help you out with other problems and other topics you might have. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.